Did you recently wake up to find your Nest thermostat no longer works? That's because Google's quietly pulled the plug on the first and second generation models. Sure, it'll still heat your house and you can fiddle with schedules on the dial itself, but all the clever stuff that made it smart, like geofencing and app control have gone. So now your thermostat has no idea whether you're home, at work or on holiday. It's basically gone from smart to slightly forgetful. Google's answer, the Tado X, the official replacement for the discontinued Nest. So today we're finding out if it's a worthy success Successor or just another smart gadget waiting for its turn to be abandoned. But before we go on a full Google hate fest, let's take a moment to remember what the Nest actually achieved. Because if you rewind about 10 years, thermostats were frankly awful. Big beige boxes, usually nicotine stained, even if you didn't smoke, with buttons that made programming your heating feel like cracking a safe. Then along came the Nest, sleek, connected, and just a bit smug. And suddenly the whole industry had to up its game. But now that Google's lit the fuse, they've stepped back, leaving the field to companies that actually understand heating systems. And to be fair, there's a lot to understand. From OpenTherm to S-Plan, and now a flood of heat pumps and hybrid systems, the Nest just couldn't keep up. Of course, the smart home world hasn't stood still either. Over the last decade, it's evolved from a jumble of incompatible systems and flaky apps into something that's finally starting to make sense. Most of the industry has now agreed on a common language called Matter. Think of it as a universal standard for smart home devices. So instead of every manufacturer inventing their own system, everything can now talk to everything else, whether you use Apple, Amazon, or Google. Matter is also a kind of insurance policy against what Google's just done because devices that use Matter can operate locally without constantly relying on cloud connections or company servers to stay functional. So even if a manufacturer pulls the plug, your heating, lights, and sensors should still keep working. That said, Matter isn't perfect. There are still plenty of reasons you'll probably want to use the Tardo app instead, and we'll explore those later in the video. So similar to the Nest, it comes in two components. What is going to replace the heat link? Similar looking box there. Comes with lots of accessories. We've got a bit of cable there. Wago terminals, cable ends, jumper links, fixings, from labels, thermostat itself, mounting plate, collection of fixings. So what surprises has the previous installer left us? We're going to be replacing the heat link here which is the original Nest version. The Gen 1 and Gen 2 products didn't support hot water. So there's another box here that's got a smart home control and it's doing the hot water cycle. So that's going to come out as well because we can obviously control the hot water on this new version. Other challenges, this box is a little bit bigger than the Nest one that we're taking out. So we're going to have to do some rearranging on here, but let's crack on. We've isolated, let's go. Yeah, so interestingly on these boxes, the screw to keep the cover on is actually down the side, which makes it almost impossible to tighten up where it's been installed here luckily they haven't bothered so take the cover off we can see the wiring we've got the supply to it and then linked across to the relay for the heating just triggering a zone valve on the underfloor heating these two wires here actually provide a power supply out to the nest thermostat on the wall tado doesn't have that because it's a battery powered device so there'll be surplus to requirements when we're done so in this box here is the hot water device that's triggering that home kit smart switch looks like a Meros device so this is going to come out and now for the wiring center quite a traditional Honeywell wiring center here very common okay usual jungle that you find inside these boxes this is what's known as an S-plan wiring system very common old screwed terminal blocks you can see the wiring for the hot water there a bit of that trunking that's the supply out to the thermostat, so it's going to be surplus to requirements. Here's the wireless receiver that we're going to be fitting, so the cover just pulls off. And then you've got another terminal screw there that actually covers the terminal block. That screw is captive, but don't unscrew it too far because there's a little washer on there and they can just drop off. Okay, so inside there's obviously a lot more connections because this device supports hot water and the central heating. And it's also got terminals for open therm, which is a modulates modern boilers. But say we don't need any of them because we're using an S-plan system today. So we'll be using the hot water and the central heating contacts there. Generous terminals compared to the previous Nest version, so it's easy to loop in and loop out between different terminals and Nest. That was always a challenge on that. So if you're not familiar with S-Plan wiring, and plumbers always find increasingly inventive ways to, to go about that, the Tado app actually walks you through the process. So I'm gonna add the device, scan the QR code, which is just in the corner. 
scan that. But registering the device, what are we placing? Select the model, nest. So we can see the thermostat and the heat links coming up there. So don't select the thermostat because we're not doing that yet. That's the bit that goes on the wall out there. We're doing the heat link and you can see both versions there. So it's a generation one controls a water-based heating system. It does. And then you can view the instructions telling you to isolate the power, how to open the heat link, suggest photographing the wiring, remove the unnecessary wires, which are those ones we did at the top there. It suggests putting the little sleeves over the end of them. And then continue. So then interestingly it asks you if there's a bridge between the line conductor and terminal two. So yes, there's a bridge. Next, undo the wiring, put some labels on it. Now, because we're gonna make some alterations, we're gonna have to change the location of where the, the receiver goes. That's not necessarily relevant on this. We might just use those tabs as we get into the wiring box there. Open up the receiver pretty straight forward. So we're gonna crack on. The first link goes between the incoming line supply and the common of the relay for the heating supply. And then we're also gonna come out of the common from there to feed the common for the hot water because we're gonna combine these into this one unit now. So that goes in there. I can tighten this terminal up. We'll loop across to common for the hot water. Since we're going to make some wiring arrangements, I'm going to actually use the wire that's been supplied with it in the pack. We might need to chop that down a little bit. Naturally. And then we go for the normally open contact, the same, the normally open neutral line output for the central heating and output for the hot water cord grip. But these screws aren't captive. That's ready to install on the wall. Right, this a little bit lower because there are some switches on the top there for manual testing and commissioning, setting the system type. But apart from that, we should be finished under this cover. Next job, correct this one. So I'm actually going to use some of the label supplied of this just so we can remember what's going where. So that is our hot water normally open and our central heating normally open. And then the other ones are just the supply. So all I need to do is take line and neutral to those connections. So now we should be able to remove the redundant wires. Let's rescue our heat link from there. You can see the difference in those terminals. Challenging to get into, much more roomy ones now. And then from what was our hot water controller. back on so we'll just finish off the commissioning on this switch the mains power back on got some lights on your wireless receiver is ready to connect we're going to use the wi-fi password connect to the device create its own little wi-fi network like a lot of devices do iot devices tend to only connect to 2.4 gigahertz networks so it's configuring it's connected to wi-fi it's configuring the unit the nervous part of the job all right so it's configured now close one slight change here before we set the device we thought we we're just replacing a heat link but we've actually added the hot water function from that other timer so the only thing i'm going to do now is configure the little setup on the front of here so if it was just a heat link it would be a combi relay but because we've got hot water and it's an S-plan, we need to select this next button down here. So if I just push this button, cycle through, you can see that's now set to S-plan. Before we do that, I can actually test the hot water. So if I push this, hopefully we'll hear a zone valve open the pump start. Valve's open for the hot water. Just wait for the pump to kick in. And there we go. We can see this pump has started. So that's good. Switch that off again and it should stop the process just test the heating then we can hear the pump on this underfloor heating manifold kick in when this valve opens the uh, the main pump will start as well now we're happy with that i can put the cover back on once the cover's on you can't access the setting for the different heating type systems but you can still access the boost functions there on top okay so next job is to replace the actual nest thermostat itself these come off the wall really easy they just pull off the wall and then you've removed the head they did have a battery inside them so you can still see that's powered up so we remove this plate from the wall world's longest backdrop screws here all right and then there's just two wires that came from the heat link again these were low voltage but they're now completely redundant so dilemma here nest 
supply these templates put on the wall because the original mount didn't cover the back box. The new thermostat does. However, do we want to redecorate around there? Now, I did look on the website and actually tried to make a 16 centimetre square plate that could go over there, which I didn't realise at the time when I was ordering those. That should have been an option for when you do the nest replacement and upgrade. So I'm going to actually keep this, and I found when I've done one of these before, that actually will sit on the front of it and still fix through those screws. These wires are redundant, so I'm just going to use Wago terminals, basically cap them off. I'm not going to waste two. I can just use one and connect them together because they're not doing anything but who knows what the smart home world looks like in another 10 years time back into the app to add another device and again it's a case of scanning the qr code on the back finds that straight away knows it's a wireless temperature sensor register the device yep and then immediately it's found the device out to the system this may take a few minutes talk amongst yourselves then we can see the display has actually lit up so while that's doing that i'm going to fix the back plate to the wall now again the cover screws are hidden underneath this block same screws but i'm going to fix it through the old nest as well these are the longest screws in the world because i can do that so while i've done that it's connected to the system so now it's time to give it a name office process done of course i've i've gone through that you could view the installation instructions again there just creating a room in the app as well now just in case of putting the cover back on hide the mounting screws peel and reveal matte finish now the device is battery powered my experience from running other devices the v3 was you probably need to replace the batteries once a year the reality is i find you rarely actually touch the device itself you're mainly using the app to do the controls but again we can see if you need to manually adjust the temperature you can do Actually, if we turn that on, hopefully that should have linked up to the which I was setting, and the pump should start. It's a relief, it works. We're fitting the wireless version here, which means the connection between the thermostat or room sensor and the programmer X is completely wireless. That gives you far more flexibility when deciding where to position the thermostat in the home. There's also a wired version, ideal if you're replacing an existing wired thermostat, such as for underfloor heating. The wired version is still battery powered, but includes a relay to the existing thermostat, wiring to operate zone valves, or call to heat on combination boilers. The programmer X also plays a key role in more complex installations. Not only does it handle the heating system wiring, it also acts as a thread border router, which is your gateway into a Matter smart home network. Every Matter setup needs at least one border router. Some devices, like certain Apple TVs and HomePods, already provide this functionality. So if you're using the wired thermostat and you already have one of those in your home, you may not need anything else. But if you don't have any other Matter compatible devices acting as a border router, you'll need to add a tab or bridge. For most homes, one border router is enough for full wireless coverage, but in larger properties or buildings with thick walls or detached buildings, you can easily expand the range simply by adding more border routers that could be additional TAD or programmers or any other matter border router. This easy scalability is a significant improvement over earlier generations of TED or hardware, which had more limited range, and your system doesn't have to stop at the thermostat. You can also add TED or smart radiator valves for room-by-room -room temperature control, giving you a much more granular approach to heating management. Being matter compatible also means you can integrate your heating control with Google Home or Apple HomeKit. That's ideal if you want to create more advanced automation, linking your heating with lighting, occupancy, or other smart home triggers. However, Matter still has some limitations. For example, it doesn't support hot water programming yet, so you'll need to use the Tado app for that. And in truth, using the Tado app is probably the more logical choice for most installations anyway. It gives you access to all the advanced features and setting up heating schedules is simple and intuitive. Configure one day, then copy it to the rest of the week. If you want to take things further, there's also an optional subscription of around £30 a year, which unlocks extra intelligent features such as self-learning learning algorithms, open window detection, and more sophisticated geofencing. I found this to be a really straightforward installation, which means it's an easy swap for an existing Nest thermostat and heat link, and it opens up a lot more possibilities in the process. Nest might have kick-started the smart heating market, but Tado seemed to have taken it to another level with far more options and a lot more future-proofing built in. Let me know what you think in the comments. Have you made the switch or are you considering it? And if you're still wrestling with S-Plan wiring systems, we've got a video that breaks it all down. You'll find it on screen now.